And good morning, uh, everyone. So uh, I would like to uh, talk on Netherlands French uh, program in presence, and very concretely, I would like to introduce you to uh, a new uh, handbook, that, oh, the advanced copy of a handbook on Netherlands French program we are uh, launching uh, today. Uh, I just. Uh, I don't want to repeat what uh, has been said before. I just would like to stress uh, uh, three points related to the situation of HIV and drug users uh, in prisons. I mean, the, the first point is that uh, the HIV prevalence in prisons is always much higher than in the community. And this is a general rule globally everywhere in all, in all countries in the world. And uh, it can be uh, 20 times higher, for example, like in Ukraine, or it went up to 50 times higher in, um, in Mauritius, for example. But it, and especially when uh, you have a high endemicity of people who inject drugs in the country and high incarceration rate of people who inject uh, drugs. The second point is that we talk about uh, HIV here, but hepatitis C is even worse. And the situation related to uh, hepatitis C, uh, prevalence of hepatitis C is even worse uh, than uh, HIV in all this country where you have a uh, high prevalence of people who, who inject drugs. And about data, it's even worse. We have less data than um, uh, on HIV. And finally, I just would like to uh, repeat, we mentioned HIV and TB, but HIV and TB are the very first, are the first causes of mortality in prisons uh, across um, uh, the world. So we say uh, there is drugs in prisons and people are injecting uh, drugs in prison. So what happens when someone, uh, uh, people who inject drugs in, in prisons, uh, enter prisons? Oh. Most of them will, uh, or many, will reduce uh, the, the injection. Uh, some will continue uh, as before, but depending very much on the availability of the, of the drugs, and some will initiate injecting uh, uh, in prisons. In most of the place, you have uh, no needle exchange program, you have no access to needle exchange program, so people either have one syringe, they will share among five, six, seven people, ten people. They will, uh, you have a market for new syringe, you have a market for uh, used syringe, and you have also homemade syringe. On the right side of the, of the, uh, the slide, for example, these are a picture of homemade syringes that uh, were discovered in presence in the US. And on the left side, this is a harm reduction uh, information actually developed by a harm reduction uh, organization to explain to the prisoners how to make safe home-made or prison-made injection equipment uh, uh, in, in prisons. Leader and Singe program uh, is uh, the first, the very first intervention of the comprehensive package for HIV and people who inject drugs. This uh, comprehensive package has been endorsed by all the UN, I mean the General Assembly, the Commission on Narcotic Drugs, the UNS program connecting board by ECOSOC, and the, uh, the interventions are ranked or listed by order of priority. And it's quite easy to, to, uh, to understand that if you want to prevent transmission through injection equipment, the very first uh, intervention is the uh, needle exchange program is the very first intervention to put uh, uh, in place. It has been shown that uh, the uh, needle exchange program in prisons is effective as, as it is feasible. I mean, this publication by the WHO, you know, the CNU, and it's, that it's dated from 2007, and it was a review of the different programs that had been evaluated in the world, and, I mean, and all these uh, evaluations showed exactly the same uh, results that uh, the drug uh, use in, among the participants was not. Uh, increasing, so even decreasing, that there was no reported instance of initiation of injecting, that there was a decline or it, it almost disappeared the sharing of injection equipment, 
there was no new HIV or hepatitis C cases, that it facilitates the referral to drug dependence uh, uh, treatments, that it reduces the occurrence of abscesses. And uh, what the, the two last points are also important because this is the concern by, uh, of the security staff that uh, there was no reported use of needles or syringe as a weapons against other prisoners or against the staff. And there was no accidental puncture for prison uh, officers uh, in the, the cells where the prisoners uh, participating in the program were uh, arrested. And to uh, convince a bit more that uh, if you are not convinced yet that it is working, I mean this graph shows uh, on the on the top level of the of the slide you have the number of new cases of HIV uh, in Lithuania, and this is in the absence of needle exchange program and the absence of opioid substitution therapy. There is mandatory HIV testing. The coverage for ARV is low, it's 18 uh, percent, and there is uh, just uh, arm education uh, information on drugs and uh, HIV. And the lower part of the graph, you have the uh, trends in Spain, where they have a very comprehensive uh, package of interventions and uh, with needle insulin program, with opioid substitution therapy and a very good coverage, with a good coverage of ARV uh, treatment and they have peer education in all prisons and you can see how the incidence uh, went uh, to uh, almost zero. And to answer the question on incidence in Spain, they calculated the incidence only on uh, prisoners who never had any leave, never uh, were staying in the prison all, all the time. HIV in, pr in prison or health access to health uh, in prisons is also a human rights issue. It's not only a public health issue. And the first thing, of course, is to try to reduce the number of people who inject drugs in prisons. And there are many resolutions, uh, including of the um, Commission on Narcotic Drugs or the General Assembly on alternatives to imprisonment, uh, f including for drug users. And as it relates to the access to health care, there is the... Uh, um, the Article 12 of the Convention on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights uh, related to the, the right to enjoy the highest uh, uh, standard of physical and mental health. And in the uh, commentary of this article, I mean, it's clearly stated the obligation of states to respect the rights to health implies to refrain from denying or limiting equal access for all persons, including prisoners or detainees, to preventive, curative, and palliative health services. And then you have also the basic principle for the treatment of prisoners. And you also have other instruments. There are many, many international instruments supporting the access of people in prisons to services that are equivalent to uh, the one accessible in, in the community. But what is the, the reality? Uh, this map, which is uh, adapted from the uh, uh, a harm reduction international report on the status of uh, harm reduction in the world. You can see uh, in red the countries where uh, you have neither and syringe program in prison, oh, sorry, in the community, and in black the um, countries where you have neither and syringe program in the community and in prisons. And you can see that uh, the while you have quite good coverage of needle exchange program in the community, in the prisons it's very limited. And in the boxes, this is the list of countries that uh, have had or are having currently uh, a needle and syringe program. You can see that many countries started, started pilots. These pilots are uh, usually very limited and then uh, stopped or put the program uh, on hold except for Kyrgyzstan and probably Spain, where you have a very good uh, uh, coverage. So it is not new needle exchange program in prisons. I mean, the first uh, pilot was uh, in uh, Spain in um, 92, and uh, altogether 13 countries have started a needle exchange program in, uh, in, in prisons, but currently you have only uh, five or six countries having it today. Uh, a program running today. And this is one of the, the reasons we wanted to do this uh, handbook because, I mean, there are many barriers, but one of the barriers is maybe that uh, countries don't know really 
uh, how to do. You can see also that there is di different models of implementation uh, through this through a dispensing machine or through the health service with the involvement of NGOs and peer based. And each of these models have the advantage and disadvantage. And uh, this and one of the the. Um, the main problem uh, in prisons is that there is a tension, as you know, between security uh, objectives and health objectives. And when, whenever uh, countries are introducing a uh, needle in program in prisons, they tend to put the priority on the security uh, aspects. And at the end, the, the program doesn't work very well, and I will come back to, uh, uh, to that. So this is just to illustrate the different, uh, different type of system. On the, on the left, you have a dispensing machine. It was in, it is in, in Germany, and just below that one, you can see uh, the, what equipment and the box that is distributed. Because of course, it's not only needles and syringe that has to be distributed, but also all the uh, other um, injection equipment like uh, uh, water, like disinfectant, like uh, ascorbic acid, etc. Uh, in Romania, it's a bit, it was it was a, a bit a mixed system. Here is a peer educator who goes and asks the prisoner uh, and collects from the prisoners their used needles. And in, on the right side, you have uh, the needles in program in Moldova, which is uh, uh, peer based, and this is uh, in the cell of uh, the dormitory uh, of a prisoner who is responsible for needle and syringe and exchanging uh, syringe with another uh, prisoner. So to, just to summarize uh, the, the, the observation, when we went back to all these uh, different uh, pilots, that there is a very limited number of pretrial and penitentiary uh, establishment with needle and syringe program, and even when you have in this co the country where you have the coverage is very low. They don't work very well because you have too strict control, and also in some countries. Uh, participants uh, in the program can lose some privilege, like conditional release, which is a really a threat, because I mean, if, if I can spend three months or six months less in prison as a prisoner, it's the most important thing uh, uh, is that. And um, peer-based uh, international programs seem to be uh, working uh, the best, but there is also a risk of disadvantage of uh, the balance of power, so this, the, the ideal is a mixed program, uh, with, when you have peer-based and another program, it could be a dispensing machine or um, or um, uh, health through the health services. I just wanted to show you very quickly this case study in Portugal because it really illustrates very well uh, the the problem when you put too much. Uh, uh, rules, too restrictive rules. I mean, in, in Portugal in 2007, they decided to pilot the needle exchange program in, in two prisons. And this is a, it was a very good program with uh, part of a comprehensive HIV program, and, uh, and it was, and the program was distributing uh, all what uh, uh, could be, was needed uh, in, uh, in the kit. But there were two problems. First, the participants had to give specific information on the pattern of use to be included in the in the program and the and there were two i mean the uh, participants also and the exchange was also only about the healthcare units and they piloted the program for twelve months and after twelve months no one no one exchanged ask for any syringe. And um, when they conduct an evaluation after that and they ask her why, what was the problem, I mean the prisoners said that they didn't want, they, were, they had fear, they, were, they, they, th they thought they were going to lose privilege, that is going to, the information on the use of drugs would be used uh, uh, against her and against them, etc. Et so I mean this is really, uh, it's a sad, a sad situation, but it's really, uh, well illustrating the um, the um, the situation. Uh, just very uh, quickly, I think in the in this uh, uh, guidance uh, we also include uh, the uh, prevention of overdose through naloxone uh, in prisons. So uh, I, I we know that there is no uh, it hasn't been pilots up to now except for pre-release. But I mean the needle and syringe program, except especially if it's peer based, I mean it's very really the best place to to provide uh, naloxone to make naloxone uh, uh, available. 
I'm almost finished. So this is the uh, the, the document. Uh, just I mean, it goes through uh, the background, the evidence, the legal framework. It compares all the different models and uh, with the advantage and disadvantage, uh, and and uh, gives some guidance for an effective program and the type of material that has to be distributed. Then there's a part on advocacy, and there is a longer part on planning and implementation that goes from the preparation to uh, the implementation itself, and then a part on quality assurance. And in the annexes, you have examples of questionnaires that have been used to, to, do, to conduct a feasibility study, not feasibility study, a feasibility implementation study, I would think, and uh, for uh, uh, evaluation. I think the general principles is that uh, um, that we stated here is that uh, it's a commitment to public health a priority uh, and that the, the, the main objective is to uh, protect the health of the people, that you need a clear policy direction and consistent guidelines and the participation of prisoners as, and staff is essential in all the uh, different uh, phases of the uh, implementation and of course there is a need for a lot of training and uh, awareness. And finally, it's not about needle exchange program alone, it's about uh, uh, having a comprehensive uh, uh, program and this is the 15 the interventions, uh, part of the UNODC, uh, UNAS, ILO, UNDP, uh, WHO, uh, comprehensive package for HIV uh, uh, in, in presence that Kate referred to uh, earlier. So I would like to uh, uh, thank uh, Heino Stöver, who was the, the, the consultant who uh, prepared uh, the different drafts and all the participants in the different consultations, face-to-face -face and uh, electronic consultations. Thank you. <laughs>